Choosing the right colors for your design is often problematic for beginners, so I will show you an easy to follow and very fun way to select perfect colors for your design and explain why they work so well. I created an elaborate and long uh, text post so you can read all about that and this is basically the video version of that post. I will link it of course in the video information. The first thing you want to do is head over to Google and enter Adobe Color. And this is a very easy and free tool to use. There are other tools, but I found that this tool gives you the most options and works the best. So uh, there is a color rule over here that you can use. I will explain to you how it works. But what we want to do right now is click over here on this little icon where it says create from image. And this you can use to just upload an image and it will select the colors automatically for you that match this image. So this is a really nice way to cheat a little bit and find perfect colors for your design. Of course, we have different moods over here. So you have colorful, you have bright, you have muted, you have deep, you have dark, and then you also have custom where you can move the points around. This is more advanced, so I will suggest to you, if you're a beginner, stick with these different color moods. Now, if you look at this, there are just colors, no color codes. That's no good for us. What we want to do is um, select one of the moods that we like. Let's select muted for now and click over here on create color from color wheel. And this will import these colors into the color wheel. And now if you scroll down, you have the RGB codes and you have the hex codes. The hex codes are very useful if you want to do something on the internet, but they work also good for print and screen design. So don't worry about that. Now you, what you can do is just copy the hex code and go over to your software, Affinity Photo in this case. I will create a sample text. I'm not concerned about the text uh, font design itself because I'm just talking about color today. So let's enter color um, font in here. And with the text selected, click up here on the fill color Make sure you have the RGB hex slider selected because this gives us the choice to enter a hex code. Enter the hex code here and just hit enter. And there we go. There we have our color in our picture. And now I will just make two duplicates of this because I want to show you something about how color works. So I will pick two other colors from here. Let's take this one too. Go back to the program, go to fill, enter our hex code. There we go. It's in the background, so you can't see it right now, but it doesn't matter. And then we take a third one where we make a gradient. I basically take the same color for the gradient. Wait, which, which one? Okay, that's perfect. Good. So I click on gradient. I put in the first color over here. And then I need to select the second color. I will take the middle one this time. Or should we take the other? Let's take this one. Okay, there we go. So let's hit the gradient again. Click the left color. Click on color and enter it in the hex code. So you need to click on that point, then on the color selection, and then on the hex code, enter the hex code. And there we go. We have a gradient. If you click on the gradient tool, over here gives you a line and this line you can move around the two color points that you have seen before to give you a choice on which direction and how long the gradient is going to be. So how how long the, the uh, how do you say fading distance basically is. Okay, let's maybe do this the other way around. One second. Okay, there we go. Now we have three choices of text. And um, if you look at them, let's hide the other two. If you look at this one, you can see that um, the color and the flower are basically on equal grounds. Maybe I should have a taken, I take a darker color. One second, let's take a darker color because I wanted to show you a different example. I will choose this real quick. Uh, select and change it, there we go. Okay, so if you have this selection, you can see that the color is kind of dark. So and the, the flower is brighter. So people probably will look at the flower first and at the text second. 
so you can guide the view, the eye of the reader or the viewer in that way. If you look at the second color, you can see that the color is bright. So people will basically first look at the text because it's brighter. Light guides our attention and then look at the flower second. So this is another way and you can decide, do I want the people to read the text first and then look at the flower? Or do I want them to look at the flower first and then look at the text? It's a very important thing to do. The third thing we have is where we have a gradient. And in the gradient, you can see that the text is much more alive and resembles the flower. So the feeling of the softness, the aliveness and the beauty of the flower carry over into the text. So you associate the text with it. So whatever you say in the text feels as soft and beautiful and alive as the flower. So this is also a trick in design. If you associate something with another object, you feel like they have the same quality. So you can uh, influence the viewer in that way. Okay. But we have another example I prepared for you. And this is this one where we basically have just one color in different shades. So what are we going to do about that? Let's go over to our color picker up here. We upload the picture and we get just blues. So this doesn't help us very much. Let's take a deep color for the base color in the middle and click again on our color wheel. And now we click on complementary. By the way, I will explain the rules in a second. I've just finished this example. So let's click on complementary. And you can see here that we have colors now on the other end of the color wheel. So they are as distant as possible. We probably want to have something with more brightness. So let's click on this one, push up the brightness. So it's really distant from this one. It's really different from that one. So maybe, and it's still combined. So maybe this is too flashy. Um, this might be good. Okay. So all we did is change the brightness of the color. Let's take that color, go over to our picture, make another sample text. Again, it's not about um, the it's not about the the font choice. It's just about the color choice today. Like we have a color here from before, from the flower, and you can see, yes, you can read it nicely, but it doesn't really mix with the background. It doesn't have anything to do with the picture, so not a, not a great choice. Um, now, if we take the other color, let's see if that makes us better. There we go. It's a bit too bright, maybe, but we can move it in a darker area. Let's move it down here. And as you can see, the the uh, the yellow color, the yellow orange color fits much better with the rest of the picture with the blueness because it has all the qualities of the blue color in the background, but as a complementary color. And this is why they are mixing so well. They are combining so well. You know, they are not sticking out. They are not strange. Oops, I moved the picture. I'm sorry. I wanted to move the text. Of course, you have to look out to put it where you can actually read it very good. Um, so probably on a dark blue background. A reason for that, of course, is because we matched it with a dark blue. So, of course, it works best on a dark blue. But you can see they mix very well to that blue background. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the color wheel that we have here. And what is this? Um, there are different color rules on how the base color, the base color is the one in the middle with the white triangle, and you will find the white triangle also up here in, um, how can I say, uh, in relation to the base colors, the other colors are selected. So if we have this as a base color and we click on analogous, we will have a color and other colors that are spaced equally in degree around the color wheel. So if I pull these out, you will see all the colors will keep the degree distance from each other. And you can create some really interesting and nice color selections. Maybe select a different color because this is too muted for us. Um, all right, let's see something more powerful. Let's take this one. Okay, there we go. And um, 
you can see that you, with this way, with the analogous color selection, you can create colors that are very different from each other, but you can also create colors that are very similar to each other. So this is very helpful. Uh, the other thing you can do, maybe make it a little bit brighter. There we go. So you can see it better. There we go. Very nice. Okay. Monochromatic is what the name says. Monochromatic. So it's one color, monochroma. Uh, so all of these are the same color. And you can see they are the same angle of the color wheel, but moving inwards toward the white area. So they are basically different uh, brightnesses of the same color, but they are all one color. The other one is triad, where you have thirds around the color wheel. And um, again, if you move it around, they will stay equal distance, but in thirds. This is very nice if you want to create something that's high contrast. You see that often in fun designs and designs for children, also in designs probably for visually impaired, because with the high contrast, you can see it very nicely. And you can see uh, that a lot of these uh, color selections uh, can be very interesting and fun. Uh, of course, depending on where you put the uh, the circles. Let's move them to the outside. Um, you can really strong colors with that. Okay, the next one is complementary. And complementary basically means it's on the completely different side of the color wheel. So if I move around here, you always get the opposite. Here you get two that match the base color and here you get two that are completely opposite of the base color. So this is also very interesting and also very good for high contrast. Um, if you create designs that are, uh, again, for visually impaired people, for people who, um, also if you want to see something from a distance or in bad lighting. So if you make paper designs like posters, um, the uh, light changes all around the day. So you probably want to create something where you can read and see everything on the poster as well as possible in sunshine, but also in darkness. So, uh, of course, if you put a, a light blue background and then put a dark orange on it, you can read it very well because it's very high contrast. So this is a very good use for this kind of uh, selection. The next one is compound. Compound means you have two groups of colors that are equal distance to each other, and they will keep the distance around the circle. Um, so you get two groups um, of complementary colors, basically, in a compound. The next one is shades. And shades, other than monochromatic shades, is really just one color with different values of black mixed into it. So it's just getting darker, you see? This is just one color with different shades, like like the word shade says. It's just different brightnesses, different darknesses uh, of the of the same color, different blacks mixed into it. Uh, with custom, of course, you can do whatever you want. You can place the colors where you want and create your really unique own design if you feel like it. But this is probably something uh, if you're more advanced, if you have more of a feel for color, which takes some time to develop, but it's really a good idea um, to develop uh, a feeling for color. Another thing you can do if you're searching for fresh ideas is click up here and explore. And there you find thousands and thousands of different color um, selections, color designs that you can use, of course. You can just download them, you can just click on them, use them. If you're in Photoshop or if you have an Adobe Cloud account, you can just uh, save them and they will automatically import into your Photoshop to be used by you. So that is a very nice option. You can also go up here and uh, select or uh, search for something. Let's uh, uh, Christmas, for example. Let's see if we have some nice Christmas color designs. We experience an issue. Okay, that's perfect for, uh, let's try that again. Let's take summer. Please work. Yes, there we go. And you can see there's a lot of designs and they have all summer as the theme. So hot summer, garden, swimming pool, summertime, blah, 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 all these kinds of thumb, summer things. And there are often some very nice uh, color choices in here. This is pretty fun. Um, 
to be used by you for your design. So they are all free. They are all open to be used. And um, yeah, this is a, a nice way to find interesting colors. Of course, the problem with this is um, you still need to have kind of an eye for colors to see do they actually match or not? Is it really a good choice or not? So if you're really a beginner and you want to create a design, I would really suggest to you just click on here, upload the image, and use the color suggested because you are guaranteed that they will mix with the picture well because they are taken from the actual picture. So um, there is no doubt that you will have a color. You will end up with a color that looks good and makes your design look uh, nice and feel, how can I say, authentic and un not unique. How, how do you say in English, actually? Uh, you get a design that feels like everything matches together. That's basically what I want to say. Let's go back to the other picture with the three text fonts, uh, text colors. There we go. So as you can see, all of these colors are mixing well with um, the picture. And to give you an example, if you take the color, let's make a second one, and you will just choose it by yourself with the color wheel, it is way, way harder to find a color that actually mixes. And the problem with that also is your screen is probably not calibrated. So you might up, end up with a color that looks cool on your, pic, uh, on your screen, but then if you print it uh, or you look at it on another screen, it doesn't look good. So uh, this is also a risk. And uh, you are very likely to choose a color that doesn't mix well uh, compared to this color down here. Let's see. So we have this orange here. Let's see. We have the other orange picked. Oh, I did I pick the same sect or same? No, it's a different. It's a different orange, a little bit different. Yeah. But um, I mean, I've, yeah. So it's really better to have it color picked. Okay. That's basically it for this episode. I think there was already a lot of information. If you need a little bit more information, feel free to look at my post where I explain everything in detail. Also, I show different other tools that you can use to select colors and I show a little bit of different other examples in that. Um, also, if you want to support me, head over to Patreon. And uh, there you can get a subscription where you get more um, information and you get my original files with all the layers in it. Sometimes I include some goodies um, like here. I created 90 grunge maps. You see there's a lot of color here. in 90 plus grunge maps that you can download as a pattern, of course, which is now as an early supporter with just $1 per month. So it would be nice if you do that. I would be very happy about that, but basically that is your choice. Um, have a look at it and see if you like it. Thank you for watching my videos and see you in the next episode. Bye.